What's up, people? I'm Carlo, and uh, today I'll be doing a basic color grade and color correction tutorial. Uh, by no means am I pro colorist, um, but I just wanted to give a little bit of insight on how I transform my log footage into a cinematic looking grade. Uh, all of the clips was shot on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2, and I will be using DaVinci Resolve for the coloring. Uh, so let's get right to it. Thank you. All right. So now we are in Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve. Um, I have a shot already lined up here. Uh, this was shot on the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2. Um, so let's get started to transform this image into a cinematic looking grade. So my first step is to add a secondary node. The reason for this is because I like to leave the first node alone um, and go into Camera Raw, you'll select Full Res and then Clip. Um, when you open Resolve and drop in the clip for the first time and it is a raw shot, the settings that will come automatically will look like this. So what you're going to have to do is click here, go to Full Res, Project, switch it to Clip. And now you have full access to all of the raw capabilities here. I normally select highlight recovery just for safety. Uh, so next I'm going to bring up these scopes just to see what the image actually looks like. Um, because my screen isn't calibrated, uh, I can't really trust my eyes. So I'm starting to learn the scopes more. All right, so let's go into node number two. First step for me is to go into the primaries. Um, so I'm going to bump this up quite a bit. See how far we can go. Kind of like that. Let's bring the shadows down a little bit. That looks pretty good. And then the gamma, which is the mid range. I'm gonna drop that a little bit to make it a little bit more contrasty. Looks good. All right, so a little before and after, just a little bit of work on the primaries. So as you can see, it kind of brightens up the image and adds a bit of contrast and kind of separates the subject right here from the wall a bit more. So you can see it's kind of together. Now with a little bit of contrast, it kind of makes it pop a little bit more. All right, so step two for me is I like to go to the contrast tab over here, kind of bump this up a little bit. Stay around 1.2 ish, looks about good. And the pivot, I'm going to drop a little bit just to spread the contrast a little bit out of the center. Looks pretty good. And the saturation, I'm going to bump all the way to 100, see what it looks like. And now I'm going to work my way down. All right, I think I like that right there. It looks good. All right, so next up, I'm going to look at just the color wheel, see what we're looking at here. And as you can see, it looks pretty balanced overall. Saturation looks good. The white balance looks pretty even. All right, so the next, I'm gonna add another node and on a Mac, it's option S to create a new node. And here, what I'm gonna do is just a basic little tone curve. What I'm gonna do is click these three little dots, go to editable, editable splines. Editable, sl tongue twister there. Editable splines. So what this does, when you click or create any new key point, it creates an extra one so you can drag it and kind of smooth out the curve. Instead of just dragging, you can kind of smooth it out and curve it to any smoothness you would like. So I'm going to kind of bump the highlights a little bit here. And then I'm going to drag the shadows down just a wee bit all right that looks pretty good for me right now 
Next step, option S, create a new node. And from here, I'm gonna go into the window. Oh, sorry. All right, so I'm gonna go into the window tab, and from here, uh, I'm going to look at the image and see where the light is coming from. So since I did shoot this, I know that there are windows here in this corner, and windows here in this corner, providing light on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is kind of emphasize those a little bit. So I'm gonna turn and kind of mimic the light of the window and make it extremely soft. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is go to the mid-tones, try to bump this up a little bit, just to provide a little bit more light. Go to the gain and go up a tiny, tiny bit. So that looks pretty good. Let's see a little bit before and after real quick. Before, after, before, so it looks really good. Next step I'm gonna do is option S, and I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Grab the circle, drag it over to the corner where the light is that I wanna emphasize, make it a little bit bigger, and then soften it quite a bit. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to the midtones and just rise that up a little bit. Go to the gain, rise that up a little bit. All right, and so now you see that both of these are providing a little bit more light on the subject, but the subject itself is a little dark for me. So what I'm gonna do is option S, create one more node, and I'm going to go back to the window tab and click the circular again to kind of make it to the width and length of him a little bit shorter but we're gonna soften it quite a bit and now from here we're gonna go to the gain and it's just gonna be a slight so you see if we go too much it becomes the shadows start to get bumped up and there's it loses the contrast so let's just bring it down just a little bit So, a little bit before and after, before and after. So it looks pretty good right now. So what I'm about to do is go back to node number one. And as you know before, we didn't touch this at all. So what I'm gonna do is to go into the, sorry, the motion effects tab. And here I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of noise that's going on. You can see there's a bit of noise right here all over it's just a little too much so what I'm gonna do is go to the frames click three sorry I'm gonna click three I'm gonna go to better and then medium all right so next is to go to the Luma and Chroma, and I'm gonna type in the number 8.4. And that's gonna, because they are linked together, they're both gonna to transform to 8.4. All right. The next step is to go to the spatial threshold, and I'm only gonna to touch the Chroma, so I'm gonna break the link and go to 6.8. Um, and from here, that is about all. So let's zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, the noise kind of dissipated a bit, but it didn't remove any kind of sharpness. So it looks really great. Um, and I want to shout out the pro colorist. His name is Kazi. He is the one that showed me how to do this. Not personally, but through his tutorials, um, I found that this technique and his numbers really work well in removing noise. So the last step that I like to do is add a LUT. 
So I'm gonna go find a LUT that I like. Usually it's in this vintage LUT pack. Just scroll through them. I kinda like that one. It's also nice. Going to blue, to green. I think I'm gonna go to vintage one. So as you can kinda see here, when you immediately add a LUT, the image becomes 100% colored to that LUT color. So what I'm gonna do is go to the key tab and underneath the key tab is key output and gain. Right now it's at one, which is full strength. So what I'm gonna do is kind of drop this down. And as you can see, the image starts to go back to its natural look with a blend of the LUT. So I, I'm thinking, so this is zero, no LUT. I'm thinking somewhere around here. Looks quite good. It lifts the shadows just enough, but there's still a bit of a contrast. All right. And then from here, I think we are done. I like this image, it looks great. Let's check a little before and after. Before after so as you can see that there's in the original image there's not much separation because of how flat the image is but once you color it and you add the contrast and you add these windows over here to add a little bit extra light and light the subject a little bit more in particular this shot it works really really well and it brought it together perfectly so this is the final shot. Um, I will play a quick clip of the one that we're looking at currently before and after. Um, so I th think that's it. So thank you very much. Appreciate it and have a good day. Thank you.